I have two brief questions I'd like to ask, if I may. Hi, welcome to Left Foot Media. My name is Brendan Malone and you're watching The Daily Question. Today we're going to be firing off a few different topics. Uh, it's a bit more festive around here for today. Christmas Eve, uh, tomorrow's Christmas Day, I'm even wearing, look, my Santa themed Hawaiian shirt. Now by the way, this is quite an auspicious moment, the fact that this shirt has come out, you should probably light a candle for this because normally this shirt only comes out once a year. This is like a sacred piece of clothing in my house. It only comes out once a year on Christmas Day at the family Christmas function. So it's, it's pretty darn momentous that I'm actually wearing it today uh, to shoot this video with, but that's how how peak we've got with Christmas. We've, we've, re we've reached ultimate Christmas wokeness when you're wearing a shirt like this. And uh, also today, uh, just for a little bit more fun uh, and for your viewing pleasure, uh, we're going to have a little countdown timer on the side, I don't know, somewhere on the side of the screen. I'm making this up as I go. This is how festive we've become. All the, the whole plan's just gone right out the window. But there's going to be a little countdown timer as we explore each topic. And so you know how long we've got to go and what's coming up. So first question, the new Hellboy trailer. What do you think? It dropped uh, a couple of days ago on the internet and my first thought when I watched this trailer was, oh no, this looks like the last Jedi of trailers. This is awful. Now I love Hellboy. I've got both Hellboy films in my movie collection. The first one is definitely better. The second one could have done with a little bit more work, but still, they're both pretty good films. I watched this trailer though, and I don't see any of that atmosphere. I don't see anything that screams to me that this is gonna be a good film. I look at this trailer and I think, what? This looks like a very bland, action-y, superhero thingy that is trying to do Hellboy. That looks like a bit of a knockoff. First of all, this is directed by Neil Marshall. Now, Neil Marshall is not by any stretch of the imagination, an incompetent film director. He has a really good niche. His film Dog Soldiers, I remember renting that when it first came out on DVD, available as a rental here in New Zealand. And it was just, it's a cult classic and I loved it and it was enjoyable. And he has a particular niche and he sort of carried on in that style. Then came Descent, I uh, wasn't a huge fan of that, but it's, it's not a terrible film, but I know some people really love it. Uh, Doomsday, I enjoyed Doomsday, it wasn't the greatest thing on earth, but it was good, it's, you know, again, well made. Um, what, Centurion, I like that film. I don't think he's made, from memory, I don't think he's made a, 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 a theatrical release movie in about, I think, eight years or so. Uh, I could be wrong on that, so please, someone Google it, IMDB it, and tell me how wrong I am. I think he made a TV movie a couple of years ago, but other than that, he hasn't actually made a, a theatrical release in about eight years or so. So it's it's going to be a return to the big theatres. But looking at this, I'm going, no, this this doesn't look right. Now, this could be just a case of trailer-itis. This could be a really good film with a terrible trailer. That does happen. But I, I'm looking at the trailer and I'm, I'm not convinced. Now, here's the other thing that's clearly missing, apart from Del Toro. Now, what Del Toro brought to the Hellboy franchise, I think, was his particular atmosphere and, and, and his sort of his quirky take on visuals and, and world building that very much was part of those first two films. The other thing that, that was just key, I think, and it was a partnership really, was between Del Toro and Perlman. So the fact that you haven't got Ron Perlman playing Hellboy anymore, it is really, really noticeable. Not only that, but the actor they've got playing Hellboy now, David Harbour, I don't know why he was even chosen for this role. There is nothing about his past repertoire of acting that screams, this guy is a charismatic frontman. This guy is a big presence on screen. This is the leading man you need in Hellboy. Now, I'm not saying he's a bad actor, but what I'm saying is that what you need with this particular character is what Ron Perlman brought to the role. And Ron Perlman brought this sort of strong, charismatic, very front-footed, forthright presence to the role of Hellboy, and you need that. He also brought this sort of quirky eccentricity, which makes sense. This character who is totally a fish out of water, doesn't belong in our world, has got all these weird things about him, and in many senses, or in many ways, this guy shouldn't even be a superhero when you stop and think about it, and so it was just perfect. I didn't see any of that in this trailer, so it just doesn't look good. Next question, and this one's a bit more serious, does the world need men to be more sensitive? Now the reason I'm asking this question is because a couple of days ago I was watching a television panel discussion, and one of the panelists suggested that what the world needs desperately right now is for men to be more sensitive, and, and this is something the world's crying out for. 
the first thing I heard, as soon as I heard those words uttered, my first thoughts were, no, that's not true. The world doesn't need men to be more sensitive. The world needs men to be more virtuous. And you might think, well, is there a difference? You know, won't you be someone who is a sensitive man if you are a more virtuous male? Well, yes, but there is an important difference, and it's, it's, it might seem subtle, but it's actually quite profound and really huge when you stop and think about it. You can be a sensitive man who lacks virtue. You can be a man, and I mean, in, I guess in both senses of that word, the way we use the word sensitive in the English language, one is you can be very sensitive and attentive to the needs of others, but you can be an absolutely manipulative psycho along with that. In fact, that's probably one of the big hallmarks of manipulative psychopath people is that they actually are sensitive to other people's needs and vulnerabilities and weaknesses and all those kind of things about a person. And that's why they're so good at manipulation because they understand the psyche of the other person that they are trying to manipulate. They're very sensitive and aware. So sensitivity on its own in that way is not good. You need it coupled with virtue as well. And then the other type of sensitivity, of course, is you know what might be called emotional sensitivity, men who are a bit more emotional. But pure emotionalism without any sort of restraint is not a good thing at all either because what you've got then is your passions that are running your life. Uh, you're not going to be a very prudent person, and that's a really important virtue to have in your life if you are allowing your emotions to constantly just emote and run everything. As per usual, what we need, I think, is to avoid the extremes. So one extreme would be to say that, uh, you know, uh, real men are rocks and they don't have any emotions at all. So that's, that's one extreme we want to avoid. And the other end of the spectrum is, you know, men should just be constantly emoting about everything. No, they shouldn't be doing that either. Now, how do you walk the middle ground, I guess, how do you walk the middle way and avoid those two extremes? With the practice of virtue. This is why virtue is so fundamentally important. And, and here's my, I guess, my big key take-home point. That truly virtuous men are actually going to love more authentically. They are going to live a more authentically loving life in the world. And authentic love is not simply emotion or, 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 or a feeling. That's a mistake that's very common in our culture today. It's not, oh, I've got butterflies in my tummy. It must be love. Yeah, or it could be a bad sandwich that you had for lunch. So it's really important to know the difference. Love is actually a tangible, concrete action. It is something that happens in the world and it can be objectively seen when it's happening. And, and, and love, authentic love, is seeking the good of another person. It's willing their good, doing things for their good, seeking their good, even when it might cost you something to do that. And you can tell when someone is actually loving based on that objective criteria as opposed to, I've just had a feeling about something. So authentic love sometimes it also has to be coupled, obviously not sometimes, but all the time with prudence. And what that means sometimes is that authentic love might mean that you have to uh, um, extend a, a kind word, a sensitive word, a, a warm gesture of embrace. Other times, authentic love might require you to take a firm stand and to, and to say some things that are going to be very unpopular and are going to be harshly received. It might require you to, to engage in what, you know, what is commonly called tough love. That's what authentic love is all about. So the world needs men to be more virtuous, not simply more sensitive. Right, next question. I guess this is the big question, the big kahuna that you've all been waiting for, the most pressing question that everyone asks at this time of year. I know it. Everyone from the, the smallest to the eldest member of the family around the Christmas dinner table says, OK, kids, uh, or OK, Granny, is it Die Hard or Lethal Weapon? That's the best Christmas movie. Now, the reason I'm asking that question is because Douglas, who is one of my financial supporters of the channel, Douglas, thank you very much for that, sent me a message the other day, and it was literally only a sentence, and he says, what say you, Malone? Um, Die Hard or Lethal Weapon? Uh, and Douglas believes that uh, Die Hard is a Christmas movie, uh, that Lethal Weapon is not. And he says, what do you think, Brendan? Well, here's what I think, Douglas, and everyone else who's watching, I think they are both Christmas movies, but I think Lethal Weapon is actually the better Christmas movie. It's, it's more of a Christmas movie than what Die Hard is. Let me explain why. Die Hard is a movie that is set at Christmas and has Christmas effectively as a th thematic sort of element that keeps reappearing in the film. You know, the dead terrorist with the uh, Santa Claus hat on and the ho ho ho. Ha ha ha, funny, Christmas as a prop in a film. But Lethal Weapon is actually a Christmas film. It's not just set around the time of Christmas. It's actually 
about the one of the important elements, I guess you'd say, of Christmas, the idea of community and of family. The film starts with one of your main characters contemplating suicide because he is alone at the Christmas holiday period. The film ends with that same main character being welcomed into the other main character's home and into his family life for Christmas. That's the, th the thing. The thing is, this is definitely a Christmas film. Now, Die Hard, I think, is probably arguably a bit, a structurally a better film, but I think that Lethal Weapon, they're both Christmas films, but I actually think that Lethal Weapon is a more authentic Christmas film because it actually ultimately is about Christmas itself and doesn't just use Christmas as a bit of a prop or, 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 or a, uh, um, a thing that's, you know, the backdrop to, to the events that are, that are taking place. It's not just a period of the year that all these uh, action-y events are happening to be unfolding in. It's actually quite a central part of that film. Right, that's all I want to say in this video, apart from one last important message. I am going to be taking a bit of a Christmas break. So this is going to be my final video for the year, unless something... Uh, happens next week that's a little bit unexpected and it may do but the plan is at this stage that this will be my final video for the year. I'm going to take a couple of weeks off uh, YouTubing to spend quality time. This is my holiday break, I'm stopping work for the year and I'm going to spend a, a few weeks of really solid quality time with my first and most important calling in life which is, is my family. So that's what I'm going to be doing over the next couple of weeks. And over that period though there will be YouTube content but there won't be episodes of The Daily Question so I'm, I'm still going to be targeting uh, one piece of YouTube content a week over this Christmas holiday break. We will be resuming what we might call normal transmission sometime mid to late January when I get back on deck again and, and, and things are starting to get back into full swing. Now, there is also going to be a bit of a tune up of my YouTube channel next year. I really want to improve, as I've already said, what I'm doing on the channel. I want to make this a value added channel. I don't just want this to be noise. I don't this, just want this to be sort of reactive commentary. I want to actually try and bring something of substance that you can watch that you can hang your hat on, you can go, hey, that's not just enjoyable, but that's also really informative and it's helping me to get something a bit more substantial out of life. And I know that from my feedback I've had from lots and lots of you this year, that's the kind of stuff that you're really sinking your teeth into on this channel. So it, there's going to be a change. Now I'm not sure exactly what this will look like. I'm going to spend some time over the holiday break in this downtime actually thinking about and, and prudently sort of planning a way forward on the channel in that regard. And the last thing I guess I really want to say in relation to the channel is a huge thank you to everyone this year who has uh, first uh, obviously financially supported the channel. You guys are awesome, the, the financial backers of this channel. Uh, you have enabled me to actually spend more time than I otherwise would have uh, on this channel and producing the content. I, I want to honour that commitment by, as we go forward next year, building something that's even more substantial. So thank you, a huge thank you to all of you. Um, your generosity is, well, it is overwhelming, and that can sound trite, and that's probably something that a lot of YouTubers attempted to sort of just trot out at this time of year. Oh, thank you to the subscribers. You're amazing. I, I really mean that. I, I, it is... Yeah, it is. It's it's your generosity is just awesome, and so I'm truly blessed to have that level of generosity from you, and I'm very aware of that fact too. Uh, please understand, I don't take that for granted. If you're not a financial supporter of the channel and and you want to do that, there's details in the description below about how you can get on board with financially supporting the channel and helping to get some more content out there. Uh, secondly, all of the people who have subscribed this year, all of the people who are commenting, even those who get on and disagree with me, you know who you are, Emmanuel. Can Come on, say hi in the comment section. You guys are awesome. It's great to have you on my channel. The regulars, the people I see all the time. And, and so many people have sent me correspondence this year. I apologize that I haven't been able to get every single question that's been sent to me on air this year. There's just been so much correspondence. I've had so much to try and get through. But you guys are awesome and I really appreciate that. So thank you very, very much. And I, I feel... Uh, I, I guess I feel a sense of duty to the people who watch this channel and who are getting something out of it, but I also get a great joy from doing this, and it's a real pleasure to be engaging with people. I think if it was just me talking to a camera, it wouldn't be much fun. I probably would have given up a long time ago. So thank you to everyone who's subscribed, who's regularly on the channel, as I said, even those who get on and disagree. And as I said in one of my videos a couple of days ago, amongst all of your other usual Christmas festivities, 
why not take some time this year to get along to your local midnight mass or Christmas Day church service? The reason we have this season, this festival, and we stop for this holiday of Christmas is because of Christianity. Christianity is the source of this holiday, of this festival period. So why not do yourself a favour and, and check it out for yourself, get a little bit more informed about this time of year and what it's all about. This is part of our heritage, particularly those of us who live in the West. And so it's important to be well-schooled and well-formed in these things. And who knows, you might discover or see a few interesting things or even meet a few interesting and maybe even quirky people along the way. It's well worth doing. Thanks for watching. As per usual, I'd love to hear your thoughts about everything we've discussed today So and anything else. What are you doing at Christmas? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you like the content I'm creating and you'd like to see more of it, then please consider supporting this channel financially. The details about how you can do that are in the video description below. That's right, I can hear the music too, so that means it's time for me to go. So if I don't see you beforehand, have a joyous and Merry Christmas and a blessed and Happy New Year. Thanks for watching.